So what I'm going to do is update you on what's going on with this next big system that's coming through, how much it's still going to give us as far as impacts, and what could happen as far as a severe weather threat. I see tornado outbreak just thrown out there like it's everyday candy, and that's not something you should talk about lightly. I really want to touch on the potential for a tornado outbreak and what really could happen. Now we still have this storm that's going to the upper Midwest, still dropping that little bit of snowfall and going out to the Northeast, putting a little bit there as well. It's gonna be a lot of rain and storms. While we get that second system that's still bringing a little bit more snowfall to the upper Midwest. Then we're gonna get a break, just like I said yesterday, and this big storm is still gonna roll on through, bringing severe weather chances in the South, still bringing blizzards, heavy snowfall, even damaging winds still with this system as it moves to the northeast still a possible nor'easter so let's go through the impacts real quick and see what could still be coming along with this storm and you can see through the whole run of the system you still have feet of snow showing up in multiple locations and the canadian does agree with the euro that it will be a high ridge for the northeast and it'll be intercoastal on a heavy snowfall GFS is the only one that's showing the opposite. So Euro and Canadian are trending together. And if you're wondering where I'm at throughout this whole ordeal, I'm right here in this blue section missing everything. Yay! <laughs> and it's still going to be a temperature battle. We still have that dry pocket I showed you yesterday. And that's why you're getting a lot of rain in the upper Midwest, a lot of wet snow. But you still have a lot of chances for freezing rain and as it goes to the northeast, a bigger chance for freezing rain. That surface low is going to be right along the coast, bringing these warm temperatures up, putting a lot of rainfall along the coast. But meeting up with this cold front, it is going to turn to a lot of freezing rain before the heavy snowfall comes in. Now, as we look with National Weather Service for the next three days, you do see you have mixed precipitation in all of this blue, some pockets of freezing rain as well, because it is a temperature battle. Snow in the white and the heavy snow on the west coast still happening now as you go through tomorrow for saturday you're still in a lot of mixed precipitation while the snow is further to the north while you're getting a lot of heavy snow still coming to the west coast still showing feet of snow and as you go through sunday then it'll transition to the northeast where you're getting a lot of mixed precipitation you're getting rain right here in the green and all the snow is going to be up here in the white as well as some possible for the ohio valley while you're still getting a lot of heavy snow, even some flooding coming on with these thunderstorms for California. So as we go to the severe weather aspect, as you look at your 850 millibar winds, you can see that the winds do start to strengthen up as we go through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Then it starts dying down, and when it goes to the northeast, it brings potential winds to y'all as well. Now, it's very important that you look at the 850 millibar winds and your ground level winds, because that's where you're going to get your wind direction with height. When you look at your 500 millibar winds, this is literally miles in the atmosphere, guys. You can see that it looks like a strong tornado outbreak is happening with this system. You don't go by that when you go to track and see What's the chances for tornadoes? It is strong. If it was reaching all the way down to the 850 millibar levels with the same strength, then this will show importance, but it's not. I'm showing different levels of wind intensity at the 850 millibar levels than on the ground level. Now, a tornado outbreak is anywhere from 6 to 10 tornadoes. Now, another thing to note is I did talk about the severe weather that is coming nine days ago. All I did was get ridiculed, be called a fear monger, and people were just laughing at me, telling me this was not happening when I tried alerting as early as I can, nine days ago. I even told you about the possibility of the feet of snow coming eight days ago. Still got to find out the location. We won't know that until we get closer. But I tried warning y'all about eight, nine days ago, and after I got hit so much with that, I did notice some of the comments got deleted, but at the same time, I just stopped talking about it. Which does confuse me because I see other people just carried on with my story and they get praised for it while I get ridiculed. Which is fine by me because I'm living for God. As people know, if you've never been to my channel before, I'm a very religious guy. And I do believe that we should give thanks to our God all the time. And I get ridiculed for it because a lot of people are not believers and they just don't want to hear about it. Matter of fact, if you read the Bible, you know that people will hate the people that support Jesus in the end times and as the years get rougher and rougher and that's pretty much where we at but enough of that let's get back to the severe weather aspect so as you can see monday going into tuesday 
the severe weather has disappeared. But as you go Tuesday into Wednesday, that's still stuck around. You still have a 15% chance for severe weather, and you still have that enhanced section of a 30% chance for northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas. Then as you go Wednesday into Thursday, there is a 15% chance of severe weather for southern Mississippi, southern Louisiana by New Orleans, and southern Alabama, a little bit of Panhandle, Florida. But however, I do not see that this is going to be a widespread outbreak. I do see people showing winds going all the way up to the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, Ohio Valley, and they're screaming tornado outbreak. And that's not good when you put fear in people like that. That is just downright wrong. So here's your forecast according to the National Weather Service. And Tuesday going into Wednesday, your highest risk for severe weather is the 30% in Orange, Shreveport, Louisiana, Bozier City, Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana, Greenville, Mississippi, and Texarkana, Texas. As well as your 15%, Memphis, Tennessee, New Orleans, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas, and Jackson, Mississippi. Then when you go Wednesday into Thursday, it will include New Orleans, Louisiana again, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mobile, Alabama, Metairie, Louisiana, and Gulfport, Mississippi. Now, as we go through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday, you can see how the winds start to pick up at 850 millibars. I'm still showing it's going to be blizzard conditions for here in the upper Midwest. It gets towards 40 to 50, even portions of the area get 60 miles per hour wind gusts, while the severe weather will only be in the south. Everybody else north, you're just going to have thunderstorms and some possible damage and winds that will come with this system. And you can also see that this is going to be a late night to overnight problems as well. So as you go into Tuesday morning, early in the morning, you start getting the snow already on a wraparound. You get these thunderstorms, but you start reaching down towards Texas. And you see how it does grow into Oklahoma. Then as you go later, while today it goes to Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, stays in Texas, but once you go later in Tuesday into Wednesday morning, then it starts growing for northern Louisiana, for Arkansas, and it does go further south as you go later in the day. Now, once you go Tuesday evening and go overnight into Wednesday morning, you have a severe thunderstorms that is brewing up for Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas. This is overnight into the early morning hours. And it does carry further down Louisiana as you go further in the morning. This is 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And as you get that daytime heating, it strengthens back up and you get some more storms going through Louisiana, Mississippi. You even get storms going through Tennessee, Kentucky, but you're not getting the values they need to make that a tornado situation, I will show you. But by 10 o'clock in the morning, you still have storms on Wednesday, and it does carry through the afternoon, stays there for a number of hours with all these storms passing up. Then by 7 p.m. on Wednesday, they start weakening down a little bit with your chances for your tornadoes, and you just have thunderstorms going to the southeast and possibly some more freezing rain going to the northeast. But at the same time, you can see that your surface low pressure is just not in the right location for a proper nor'easter. You can see that it is really close towards New Jersey, and it really needs to be right out here for your marker. That way, everybody else gets in on this frozen temperatures while it puts the precipitation on the ground and gives you all a lot of snowfall. This will be a lot of rain. You see how the 540 line moves in behind it and it covers all the ground. So you will get frozen temperatures. It just comes a little bit too late because all these warm temperatures, key surface low is too close to shore. But with these warm temperatures, you can see that your dew points do raise up. So as you go through Tuesday, it starts coming in with this cold front, but it really don't threaten it until later on on Tuesday in the afternoon where you get 60 dew points all the way to southeastern Oklahoma. And it does carry into Arkansas as well with some high 60 dew points all the way until Wednesday. This is definitely going to be an overnight into the early morning hours. Now, it does carry towards Mississippi as you go towards Wednesday, and it have a lot of strong dew points, especially in Louisiana. You get into the 70s, so it will be a lot of severe weather. And you see it does carry towards Alabama, Panama, Florida, by the time you go into Wednesday afternoon. Late on Wednesday, it's your lift, your cape, it's all gone at this point. So you still have dew points. This means you're still going to have some severe weather some thunderstorms that will be passing through after this tornado threat. And you can see that here, all the warm temperatures brings all this lift. This is your cape. And you see how you get a lot of lift 
towards Texas, a little bit towards Oklahoma as you go into Tuesday morning. But once it raises up with that daytime heating, you get a pocket towards Oklahoma. You still have it going through Texas, bringing all this warm precipitation up. I think you will have a lot of storms. But look how it carries towards Arkansas and northern Louisiana by the time you go into Tuesday afternoon. You do have a hot pocket for some lift. It's not a lot of lift. You remember what we had the other week? We saw yellows and oranges and reds. It was a lot of lift. Look how weak this lift is. I think you have a chance for some supercells to form out of Texas. And as it goes through Tuesday night, it goes towards northern Louisiana, drops down towards southern Louisiana as you go overnight into the early morning hours. And then once you go towards Wednesday morning, look how weak all that lift is. A lot of storms going to be definitely for Louisiana around New Orleans area, but then there'll be southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, maybe the panhandle of Florida after that as you go into Wednesday afternoon. Anybody north of this, no tornadoes possible for you. Without lift, you have nothing. But you can see it will bring a lot of lightning strikes, a lot of thunderstorms. So as you go through Tuesday morning, you can see lightning strikes for Texas, Oklahoma. You even get a nice dark section right there. It means a lot of precipitation in that area, a lot of lightning strikes. You have a, a chance for hail, not large hail because it would be white, but there's a chance for hail as you go through Tuesday morning for Oklahoma. And as it transitions towards Tuesday afternoon, then you have your main threat is going to be for Arkansas with all the heavy precipitation, a lot of lightning strikes, chances for your tornadoes, I will show you, as well as northeast Texas. You have a chance for supercells to form. And as it goes through Tuesday night, you can see it does get a lot of precipitation for northeastern Texas. Southern Arkansas, even northern Arkansas with these lightning strikes. Then as you go towards overnight, it will be thunderstorms overnight for southern Arkansas, northeastern Texas, northern Louisiana. And as you go into early morning for Wednesday, it carries into the big city of Louisiana, New Orleans, for all your lightning strikes all the way to the afternoon, all the way into Mississippi. Then once you go into Wednesday afternoon, it carries into southern Alabama and the panhandle of Florida. That is your main threat. If you notice, you don't have lightning strikes going way up here to the north. You don't have what you need to have all that severe weather. This will be a southern issue. Now, when you get a lot of these thunderstorms going together and they get some rotation, you start getting chances for a strong updraft and you get your chances for a supercell. That's where these tornadoes can really come out of. And you can see as you go through Tuesday, it starts growing up some potential for Texas. But once you go through Tuesday afternoon, it really grows up your chances to have supercells form for eastern Texas. Then as you go overnight and you go into Wednesday, you see it grows towards southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana. But after that, it weakens down for your chances for a supercell all Wednesday afternoon. Now, you still have a little bit of chance for supercells. It's just not as strong as it was, but I still will show you what I found. Now, this is bringing some wind gusts with it. This is your 10-meter wind gust, and all that red is in the 40s. That's where 40s start. You can see right here on the bottom that 40s start getting higher once it hits that yellow. High 40s to 50s is in that yellow. The darker the yellow, the higher the 50s, and possibly the 60s when you get to that dark brown, almost that gold color. You can see as it goes through Tuesday, it is bringing some 50 miles per hour wind gusts with it. And it goes towards the upper Midwest, bringing you all those damaging winds as you go through Tuesday overnight into Wednesday, bringing you the chances for the blizzards. That's 50s and 60 miles per hour wind gusts in the dark gold right there. While you have it in the south, you have 40 and maybe some pockets of 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Not a big chance, but you can see how while you're having this severe weather event, there's not a whole bunch of damage and winds. It starts picking up to 50s, well, high 40s to 50s once you get to northern Arkansas, not to mention all this going on up here. But the whole time, you have chances for 50 miles per hour wind gusts still while you get in this snowstorm, and it does carry in to Thursday as well. Then once it goes towards the northeast, these winds come back, and you have chances by Friday now getting to 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts for eastern Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey, a little bit of New York, Long Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and it does go into Maine as the system twirls away. And on a full path, this is what you're looking at for your wind gust during this event. So you have strong winds coming offshore because that is a strong storm that is hitting over there. And you see how it's bringing a lot of people high 40s to 50 miles per hour wind gusts as it comes towards the central U.S. 
And you can see the central U.S. It starts going 40, then it raises up towards 50 right around the south when you have the severe weather event. And once it gets to the upper Midwest where you have all this snow and this issues going on, you have 50 and 60 miles per hour wind gusts still. Still the potential for the blizzards. That is a thing that will happen. And as you go towards the east coast, as the system goes out towards the northeast, you see how it weakened down right here, right past the severe weather event and strengthened right back up for a chance for something in the northeast to give you a lot of winds. And you're talking a lot of 50s and chances for 60s along the coast. The 70s are in the water. Now, this could create a big issue, especially along the coast. So just be warned, this system will be rotating here for quite some time and creating a lot of y'all severe weather problems you're going to have. Not tornadoes, but it will be a lot of storms, a lot of chances for freezing rain before you get to snow. And of course, your temperature probability outlook for the next 6 to 10 days. You see well below average over here in the blue. All this white is your average temperatures. And once you go from the 8 to 14 days, all this cold blast is still coming down towards the deep south, towards the mid-Atlantic. Some cold temperatures coming through just like I showed you yesterday. Now, I just wanted to clarify what was going on with the severe weather. I see so many people pushing this tornado outbreak, putting people in a lot of panic. And that's not right. If you, if you need money that bad, go sit on a corner, get a little jar, jingle it. You shouldn't be putting people in fear for this. Now, when I said this nine days ago, this was coming. I was not trying to put fear in anyone. I just wanted to alert y'all. That's all I've ever tried to do here. But I think when you're talking about severe weather, you should be honest and you should tell people what's coming because that is serious issues. We do lose lives on that. And the more you hype things up, and lie to people, the more people are not going to tune in to other people on YouTube and see what's going on. They're just not going to trust anybody. So it's not good. All these people doing all this hype is messing it up for the people that really do care about your safety. So God bless all of you. May you have a very blessed day. I was going to do the generators on the giveaway today. If you've never been here before, I'm pretty much, I think I'm the only one out here that is actually giving back to the community of my viewers and I've always given away generators or something of some sort to give back to y'all and I have two I'm giving away the second one still didn't come in they had a problem yesterday I have the first one but I want to give away both of them at the same time and I don't want to do the giveaway without having possession of both of them because that would just be bad hey where's my generator I don't know <laughs> that's not good so I'm gonna wait for them to come in it's supposed to be today <laughs> And I will update you on Sunday and let you know what's going on. I will be giving those away if you are interested in a free generator. You might want to tune in. But as always, I will never leave you guys. I've been here forever for y'all. I love you all. I really do. I've grown very close to a lot of y'all. And I will never leave my God just to satisfy people because I feel like that's why I got attacked when I talked about this a while back because I'm the only one that does that. And I'm the only one that got attacked Why others get praised for their videos. I was the first one to talk about it, but I got attacked, but it's okay because all glory <laughs> does go to Yahweh, our father, our God, whether you believe or not. Just remember it's principle, not preference. You got to live by God's laws and not what is suitable in your life. But may God bless you all. Have a very blessed Friday and all glory always goes to God. No matter what you're doing, all glory goes to God. For we are all sinners and we are all lost without him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day.